Will fam, how you all feeling out there? Will fam, if you're not feeling awesome, you should start feeling awesome because you hear my voice right now. So Will fam, what is up? Well, fam, what's going on? How you feeling? How's everybody doing? Oh, yeah. We have another awesome event about to kick off right now. Show your love in the Stream Checks channel. That's what I'm talking about. For this edition of the whale live art creation session again i'm your host show you already know that uh that's actually for the whale fam who tend to attend all the events shout out to you all we love the consistency and we appreciate each and every single one of you to new members right now to the server and to people listening in the future again i'm show how you feeling nice to meet you so happy that you're paying attention to this episode that we will be making available in the future on our official whale community youtube channel whale tv and uh we're also broadcasting on twitch right now at the whale community twitch channel catch us on all the things there shout out to all of that now all that being said this next particular artist I'm about to introduce. She is an extremely active member of the whale community. She, just like the previous people I mentioned who attend all the events, she attends all the events. <laughs> and um, she's, she's beloved by many people. Um, shout out to our international whale community, our uh, whale members who speak more than one language and uh, who are from all parts of the world. We all love to connect and gel and share and do all the things under this whale umbrella. This particular artist has actually participated in a number of contests in the whale community. There was one in particular where while she did not win, me personally, if I were a judge and not and I'm not being biased uh, because um, uh, she's she's cool. But um, I would have I would have actually chosen her submission and you'll get to see why, uh, because it's awesome. And people actually use her submission to this day. And that con that contest ended about a couple of months back. So anyway, um, all that being said, I'd like to introduce this artist. She's awesome. She's incredible, incredibly skilled with the E pen on the program that she will talk about later on. Uh, she draws all the things, illustrates all the things. I would like to introduce Camo. Hey, Camo. What's up? Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, everyone. Hi, friends. <laughs> everyone say what's up. They're spamming the stream text channel right now. Yeah, Camo is pretty popular in the community, y'all. Um, for those of you who can't see the stream text channel, it is flooded. It's all love right now. Hey, Camo. So, um, how was your day today? Uh, I was working, but it's been awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, just so you know, even though we're we're in the crypto space, um, many people have uh, all sorts of ways of keeping themselves afloat. So um, while Camo is a very skilled crypto artist, she also has the gig. The, she lives the gig life. So that's that's pretty the, dope. The nine to five. Oh yeah, the nine the nine to five life. I mean, um, personally, I was I was always against it, even though I was forced to do it. So now I'm like allergic to the nine to five life. I'm so I'm I live the artist life now. I live the whale artist life. You know. So yeah, I want that. <laughs> <laughs> oh trust me you're definitely on the way you're on the way um so you're from brazil correct yes born and raised and uh whereabouts what part uh wh what part of brazil you want to mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
Uh, it's called Bahia, which means bay. It's uh, on the coast of Brazil, on the first city discovered by the colonizers, the Portuguese, Salvador. Yeah, very hot and warm and beachy. Oh, wow. So much history, I guess. That's yeah, cool. yeah. It, it's also, my city is also called the Black Rome because it's the city outside of Africa with the most African descendant people also as well. What? That's crazy. That's awesome. I definitely want to go. I, I want to visit. I'm down for a beach. I'm down for 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 Brazilian and African history. Super it's down. awesome. Amazing food. <laughs> That's cool. Side note, um, I'm a capoeira enthusiast. So uh, this is a little side, side note there. Uh, oh, yeah. And also, I'm down for food. Hey, Camo, if we can go and if I can go and get fat, you know, over there, then I'm super down. <laughs> I'm down to go to the beach, get fat and check out all the dope artwork out there. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'll host you. you yeah. You can, can have the couch. Yeah, <laughs> that's dope. All right, Camo, uh, would you, would you want to share your screen so we could take a look at some of the things? All the things going on. Let you. I'll let you peek at my super secret art or workstation device. No, not oh. so secret. Just kidding. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm down. Hey everyone. So Camo is letting us take a look at her super secret art station. Big deal. I'm down for the secrets. I'm down for the the all the gems and jewels. You know, so everyone, please click on the stream that she is sharing right now. Now I have nothing else to hide. <laughs> it's all laid out. It's all laid out. And and I must say, this is an awesome spread that you laid out here. Everyone, if you're looking at the screen now, um, Camo is showing us um, previous works or works in progress uh, from the tool that she uses. And I'll let her talk about the tool. Some of us have heard about this tool when we talked about it last week. Uh, this week we'll, we'll dive a little bit into it again. And it's actually a tool that I want to personally start training myself on. Um, Camo, would you mind letting people know what tool this is? Okay. This is procreate. Um, it's for the iPad, iPhone. Yeah. And it's four years old, I think. And I'm using since the beginning. I'm the OG procreator. OG. No. <laughs> OG. Let's go. Yes, yeah, I'm talking about. Shout out. Shout out to the OGs. Like, oh my God, I wish I could like talk to like well, we, we should have like a round table. We should have uh camo as the procreate OG. We need to find the OG of Photoshop, the OG of Illustrator, Cinema 4D, all those, and just let's pick their brains. We need all the wisdom. Like Camo could show us all the the tips and tricks, you know. I'll do. I'll. I love sharing. So. That's OG, awesome. Ulitz is asking what it is. OG. Oh, 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 Ulitz. So, okay, the term OG actually it has a number of different definitions, but the original. <laughs> this is funny. The original definition of OG is um, it's actually original gangster. But like gangster, not meaning like a bad person, but more like uh, the original person. So gangster is like a, a loose slang term for like just a, uh, I don't want to be gender specific, but person. So it'd be like it would say guy. So like the original guy. But now it's just open to uh, every gender. So it'd be like the original person, the original, the person who, who, who got to it first, you know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, DC. The original cool person. Because, yeah, it really means that you're cool, too. It's kind of implied. If you're the OG, it's like, oh, what? Super. There's a lot of respect. So shout out to Camo. Tons of respect to Camo for being the OG of Procreate, you know, in the in the crypto art space. All right. Let's 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 shift gears. All right. This is a personal observation. Uh, Camo, let me know uh, how you feel about this. So. I love personally when an artist's real life personality shines through to their artwork. Um, and looking at all of your pieces and really doing solid research on you, I get the vibes of positivity, bubbliness, uh, a sense of hyper concentration and a dedication to execution. 
uh, would you say that these qualities are really part of your personality or am I just like throwing random things on you? I feel red. <laughs> <laughs> you just laid out the tarot cards and you read my life. <laughs> It's, it's really, it's kind of like, uh, you know, when you can tell someone's personality by their handwriting, it, it's, this is like the larger scale side of that. When you look at someone's artwork, you can really tell who they are as an individual. And um, I see that, you know, there's a, th there's a lot of that shown in each of your pieces, you know. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, I do um, think about my, like, my art as being silly and cutesy and whimsical and funny. And I do wonder like if people are going to value that, you know, if they're going to take it seriously, but I'm not stopping just because I'm wondering, but yeah. What? Well, the, um, so my, my thing when it comes to artists really dealing with resistance in any space, whether you're a performance artist, you're an illustrator or anything falling under that umbrella, is that a lot of times you have to stay really true to who you are, you know, and then um, once you establish your, your formula or your DNA, it's up to anyone else to find the value in it. You know, um, if they if they can re if they really have the eye, they can see the mastery. You know, that's where the hyper concentration comes in, because while terms like whimsical or, or like funny may not be taken seriously in other regards in art it is something that's really appreciated because a lot of times people want to be transported you know uh they want to be taken out of their normal lives and be brought into a particular world which i think we're gonna start getting into a little later on in the convo because i think you do a great job at that but um yeah, in your work, um, I feel more so, I would say bubbly and less not so whimsical. Bubbly as in there's a, there, there's a bright energy, you know, um, even even with certain characters that may come off as um, like, I wouldn't say evil, but just more like leaning towards that. There's a bright, there's a brightness to the evil, you know, in the feel, not so, not so much colors. So we feel the artist, we feel you and your thoughts when you create these things. cool i like that. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah that was that was a mouthful right uh, yeah okay um there's a there, there's a piece i see right here everyone who's looking at the stream maybe you can point out well actually there's a number of pieces would you mind scrolling scrolling around a little bit you can yeah take a I, look. I i try to lay it out like in a way that makes sense like for with characters and then Later, what I'm into right now, the animals. Mm -hmm. and I mean, we, yeah, we can, we, we can, we can, um, I mean, it, it's cool how it is. Uh, we can, we can like discern what's what, you know, trust, trust your audience to have the eye, you know? Okay. Um, yeah, what I love, what I love about this batch of artwork, um, you see levels of progression with your illustrations, you see the, the pencil work. And you see um, some final pieces. You see works in progress. And again, it's a testament to you and your style um, that you really, you really feel like you want to go somewhere. You know, these characters—they live in this world, and you want to know what this world is. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I come from. I, I don't come from the crypto. Uh, universe right i i just recently landed here um but before that i do want to pursue being a character designer especially in the animation industry so that's what I, I was working towards and so that's why i have a lot of a lot of characters and i like to work with that um uh, i was singing lion king on the on the karaoke that's that that's like yeah. the reason why I became an artist was uh, through the animation um, that I loved when I was a child and I carried through adulthood so I still do what I loved since I was a child. You know, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, that was actually something I was going to bring her up late, uh, bring up later on in the convo. Um, we're actually we're, we're going to touch on that. We're, we're going to explore that a bit. Uh, so everyone, don't forget that she mentioned uh, what she just said about Lion King in particular. Um, 
But first, I want I do want to continue to talk about your origin though, and uh, before you mm -hmm. got into crypto. Okay. Um, like all great heroes, you know, like Lion King and in Disney or uh, animated pieces, right? There's always a hero's journey. So, Camo, if you're the hero, we want to know uh, where did you study art? How how did you get started in art? Okay, I up until high school, I I, I was really always aloof. Like uh, I wasn't really paying attention to classes, and I didn't really know. Like I, I wasn't like really thinking about what I wanted to do in life. So like. In the last minute in high school, I, I found out that there was a second school you would go afterwards called university. <laughs> and I had to pick some. And I was like, oh my goodness, I have to pick. And there was all those subjects really, really aloof and playing a lot of video games. Don't judge me. Um, no, no, I play I play <laughs> video games. What? All the time. The, like, no, it's cool. Keep going. It's okay. <laughs> So I really like computers because that's what I was playing on. So I thought maybe science, uh, computer science. Um, then I found out that had a lot to do with math. And so I was like, nope. And then browsing on YouTube, like I used to do a lot and still do. I found out this interview by a Brazilian who was actually a director in an animation movie. And then I was like, what? people can work with animation <laughs> like i don't know why i never considered that those things that i consumed could be a job but i didn't um <laughs> and so he said that he studied design here in brazil because we didn't have animation schools or anything like that so i was like okay design it is after high school i'm gonna go for a design in university and so i did and thankfully i passed with the very low effort of notes that I wasn't having me studying in high school, but I did, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately for me, the University of Design I got into here in Brazil was very focused on art. And um, I did, I chose design and not art because I thought that design was a safer option, that it would get me a job sooner or more, more like guaranteed, I guess. And also parents and society not encourage people to go for fine arts. Um, but now I would have chosen arts, definitely. Like now with confidence that you can make it happen, whatever you decide to, I would definitely choose fine arts. But design still had a lot of art subjects. So I studied, I was taught fine arts like a bit of fine arts education on the design course so that was really helpful and then my, on my second year of college I signed up for this scholarship and I, I, I got it and then I had a chance to study one year abroad and I picked the Savannah College of Art of Design in Savannah United States and that blew my mind it exploded like my knowledge and it's been four years since and yeah I, I owe a lot of what I like what I do now for that so, like how much it, it made me improve and such there's a lot to unpack there the first <laughs> thing <laughs> the first thing I'm gonna say is um it's so crazy how like in the the regular public school system just about anywhere um it's always a matter of like children being held in one room for eight hours and you hope that they retain something and uh you're surprised when you have like a number of geniuses in the room but they're not really retaining let's say like math or something you mentioned math <laughs> and yeah. a couple of other things and it's not really holding their attention but yet mm -hmm. they're 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 hyper focused and controlled and skilled when you put let's say uh, a couple of pieces of um, or, or, or actually I would say tools like tools to create something they're building in front of your eyes they're they're showing you uh, different perspectives um, on a particular model you know so so when it comes to you telling us that hey like um you were you're in school and it was like ah so like so so but then you discovered a means of facilitating your artistic side you were able to explore it and you flourished. You loved it, right? Like you loved yeah. doing doing art. Wait, oh, what'd you say it was? It was, um, oh God, what, what was the word design? you used? I think, uh, before design. It was- um, uh, Character design? 
No, 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 no. Before that, in the in the beginning, I, uh, I guess you was it science computers. <laughs> but, but no, before 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 that, it was uh like uh, you found a tech. It was uh, it wasn't like a tech something. It was like a in addition to it. Anyway, no, 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 not, not I the. I found an interview on YouTube. No, no, not the means, not the means of your, um, not the skill that you discovered, but you, there was a part of school that where it was like an after school program or something like that. Was that right? Or a, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. And, and through that, you were able to make this all happen. That was yeah. awesome. Yeah. I like on, that. On, on my university, you, you learn fine arts, like the traditional way, like how to copy a picture. And then on the United States, you're actually learning how to be a professional that is hireable in the industry. Although I am only becoming that five years later, but I did learn that five years behind, you know, ago in that school. I learned it, how to be like hireable in that industry. The skill set that it took in order yeah. to, yeah, yeah. Yeah having, yeah, having more than one skill makes you incredibly valuable. You know, just word to the wise, everyone who's listening, the more skills that you acquire and do well, you'll be able to uh, profit in the future from it. And here I have some portraits that I copied, like do it looking, you know, um, mm -hmm. from observation. And those, this, this one and this one, those are four or three years later. And this one and this one are recent from a few months ago and i wanted to show that this skill i or i feel like and it's really interesting that i feel i feel like that this skill didn't change much from it's not, i don't see a lot of improvement i also didn't train a lot i didn't want it to be a realist but what i think is that the basic which is copying like i learned it and that and and and, and that stay like consistent but then Drawing from imagination, which I have here, a progression from the year, the, from the years, from the years, those same years that I did those portraits. I feel like I progressed so much and it, it's such a different skill, right, that I was talking about that I learned in the scholarship and stuff. So, yeah, I, I think it's cool to have that contrast of a skill like realism that you copy and then drawing from imagination. When I saw this right on your website and your Instagram, I was like flipping out. I, I was like, oh, my God, like she's so talented. And everyone, if you could see the stream, I mean, if you could see, um, yeah, her stream, you can tell you can see like, uh, OK, let, let me just say that when she showed us the previous images and uh, the, the recent illustrations, right, and the progression between them. Uh, I actually did see the progression because I'm actually I'm looking at it from a different perspective. I can see the detail. I can see subtle changes. Uh, and um, I'm just like, wow, like even like, yeah, even. OK, this is an example right here. Like I can see like there's already a level of control that I'm like, oh, my God, it's going to take me so long just to get here, you know, and she already had it. And this is her beginning. Right. This is like this is somewhere early on. Right. Like it, It's just like really the beginning. I was teaching since I was um Studying, no, drawing since I'm a kid, but I got taught like properly, yeah, in that time, three years ago. Capital Honor, you want me to zoom in on each one? Oh, no, wait, don't, don't, don't hey, hey, DC, oh, don't sorry. worry about it. Don't worry about it, DC. Okay. It's already, it's I'll already close zoomed the in. Chat then. No, 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 no. I mean, um, I, I was talking to him. You're good. Just keep, keep doing okay. your thing. But, okay. uh, but yeah, so, so with this right here, um, yeah, like just like that. This there's certain things, right? That artists kind of know really difficult to capture, right? So like shading on hair, for example, um, having like so like the difference between having the controlled hair in the left one and then having the somewhat messy hair and then um, freckles coming off as like being natural and not like um, intentional. Like those things are re that's really difficult to capture, you know. And then in the third picture with the young lady and um, with her mouth open. Uh, this actually, I was looking at the shading up um, above her lip, under her nose, difficult. You know, um, the shading, um, the inside of her cheek, difficult to capture. These these are little tiny things. I'm like, wow, like you progressed like, wow, this is nuts, you know? It's funny that you mentioned because uh, the reason I was talking about the, my 
that the scale didn't change much. And I did, the one thing that changed was the perception. So like, but like from copying, you can like trace or you can do use different techniques to copy to make it easy. But perception, which is like the ability to see, and I think drawing is the ability to see, it, that does get better with time. So now that you mentioned the shading of the cheek, it is something that I recently developed the ability to see that. The, it's what they, I, I got taught that before, but I didn't see that, I didn't, I couldn't see that before, which is you have an object light up uh, like a sphere and you have the core shadow here and then that shadow fades away and then there's a bounce light so you don't in this case I didn't shade all the way so you could have a bit of the lightness coming through as opposed to me shading all the way like this and being dull like that and flat so it's kind of like it's being shaded, but then there's a surface here who is reflecting the light back. And so it's not dark all the way because some light is, a, is actually bouncing into it. And then you can mm -hmm. see through. So that that on the cheek that you see right here, that's what I was noticing. That I first noticed after four years. Mm. But yeah, and, and also here... I have a little bit of the 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 timeline the time lapse. This is how it started, and I started really wonky, but my perception is better, so I'm able to use tools to fix it. So mm -hmm. you can see here, I'm fixing what I already drew, and I did, I do that again and again, fixing it. So mm -hmm. that's yeah, that's the perception, and then I use the the reference later, but I didn't trace. I, I was doing. I put a reference under it later to see how different it was from what I was doing, from what I was looking at. But, but yeah, my my percep the perception of the artist, I think it does gets better with time. Yeah, you have to let it cook, right? Yeah. Yeah, that was oh man, that was so therapeutic just to watch. Like I like I like all the. All the nerdy the nerdy the nerdy language and the like the deep explanations like i could just sit here and just listen to that for, for a really <laughs> long time <laughs> you know yeah i love that too yeah so i actually i want to shift gears a little bit and then we'll okay. we'll we'll go back into something else right uh but first i want to talk about this though so you love horses camo right uh how did that happen and how does that affect your ability as an artist um, uh, well, it, I, I can't explain it because if you read it on my Instagram, I said it, I'm a, I'm a city girl. I was born and raised in an apartment in, this, in a big city and no one in my family had horses. But I do remember every time I was a kid, I see one and I'm like, I, I'm drawn towards it. it. I can't explain, it's in my fibers of my being. I don't know, I love them. And um, I'm actually also a pupil of Katie Arrington. That's how I came here. Oh. I, <laughs> she's raising a little army in the crypto space. Yeah. <laughs> and she is also nurturing us as artists, as as beings, as human beings, actually. Mm -hmm. And so she also is the one that was talking about doing what you really love and why do you not do what you love. And I dived into that. And now it's coming out. I'm like, I'm going to own it. I'm a horse girl. I love them. And so, yeah, um, they are influencing it in a way that they excite me to draw and they make me happy they make my my heart fuzzy and warm and that transpires through my art i believe mm -hmm. when i when you do something with gusto you know yeah i agree totally um the importance of animals and the reason why i want to touch on that is is um i mean the importance of animals to an artist is like um th there's nothing that really compares to it because they can sometimes serve as a subject 
both from like a spiritual sense and from an artistic sense. And they can really drive you to get to what you're truly trying to um, manifest. You know, they like uh, so I was actually curious if you if you owned uh, any horses at all or Not um, yet. it is okay. my dream to sponsor my horse one day with my art. Hmm. Oh, that so that'll be dope. That'll be super dope. <laughs> I'm gonna be drawing horses until I manifest them. In yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And it's also escapism. Like I want to experience it, so I draw it to in order to feel experience it. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, my, my last experience with horses, uh, I left um, walking funny. I had to, I had to, I had to ice, I had to ice all the muscles. It was, uh... <laughs> yeah, it is not easy. <laughs> uh, I've noticed that uh, also that um, just like animals serving as inspiration, I've noticed that artists who are multidisciplined tend to dive deeper into their work. You know, specifically artists who are also able to sing or dance. Uh, these artists tend to have a sense of rhythm and timing that really helps their pieces also so um obviously you have an amazing voice uh i'm assuming that you dance too and you're and you you have rhythm um do these things help your artwork as well no not at all i am just faking it <laughs> no. like every every area fake it till you make it right i'm just fooling you guys i don't actually sing i'm just <laughs> For I'm those doing okay, uh, but <laughs> mm, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, um, for those of you listening, uh, Camo is lying right now. Camo, uh, she's an avid uh, karaoke singer. And um, again, remember, she mentioned that she was, um, she was really into, into Disney, you know, growing up. So that should tell you something. I do. I, uh, there's an artist on YouTube called Cynics. He has really great talks about art and theories he makes up theories so that's really interesting he's like not repeating the same thing everybody does like actually thinking and stuff and he talked about the rhythm and he said that uh every artist has a rhythm and that that's something like that it's not taught in any school and it's not taught by everyone it's a theory that he's creating like you said like he said uh like i said so like when you're when you're drawing there's a certain like you, you can explain with that there is a certain like kind of like a melody with tempo of lines that you put on the, the paper and a in some time and stuff and I, I started noticing that and yeah uh it's really interesting it's not like a fully developed thing studied yet but I think it's really cool. There, there are some abstract paintings in on the story of of art, which are just like just like scribbles like that on the paper, right? That we don't really any talks about tempo and stuff. So that's mm. really interesting. And when I'm drawing, I do feel like there is a certain rhythm. Yeah. Oh. Um I, I got I went quiet one second because I got just so caught up in all these lines that you're drawing. <laughs> it's so it's so cool. This is so <laughs> And it's therapeutic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think so... this might be part of the magic that happens when artists um are doing like art what work works of art. And I I'm I'm saying that because I'm I don't come from the fine arts things, right? I I was trained to be a a commercial artist right and mm -hmm. all they taught is how to be like industrial kind of you're kind of like a machine like a cog in a system and it's not much space for feelings and abstract right there are so many rules and it, there is some certain like creative liberty of course but there's this one artist that I really like called Zidig, like that, and mm. I love him, but he's a really sour French guy, and he streams every day on Twitch. I love him, okay? I say this with love, but <laughs> he, 
he talks about how his designs and I don't think anyone would say that just looking at his work because it, it's so beautiful and whimsical and fun but he says that he has no feeling attached to it no like creative emotion whatsoever he dropped his sketchbook years ago and he's drawings are purely design and they have a rule and that's all he's doing he's repeating this rule and he hates fine arts and he hates he says that the artists are pretentious and stuff and <laughs> i think it's really funny every time he's sour and if you ask him if he likes anything he will say no <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's an artist he's definitely an artist <laughs> But um, he's super loving with his cat, and that's funny to watch. Oh, with his cat? Yeah, he he keeps them in his lap. He won't move, so they won't be bothered. And he would do a, 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 a cat cam. And I seen his stream brushing his cat's fur one time. So that's interesting. <laughs> so perfect example of what I was saying earlier about animals serving as subjects or... Um sources of inspiration um and part of the reason why i i kind of felt that from you and horses and and your your sour friend who is an artist regardless of what he's saying even if he's following a formula there is a formula to everything but he does have feeling it's just um there may be multiple external factors that are involved but you can tell that he has feelings because of his cat so that may be the source so yeah you look i, I think well someone given advice because i'm looking into fine arts now right I, i've been studying into all those rules and how to be commercial and now i i want to explore what is it that i can create in the world that isn't following rules if i'm not trying to follow rules if i'm just trying to make the best that i can make that's really interesting and also shout out to katie for unleashing that on me and many others um but um I, I lost three and a thought. What was he? Oh no! Uh, I, that, let me. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. that he. Oh, okay, I got it. Got it. Got it. That he has feelings. Um. Um. <laughs> um. I forgot again. <laughs> it's, it's cool. Um. Let, let, to piggyback. Um. Well, for one, shout out to Katie Arrington. You know you're dope. If, if you're listening to this, you know that you're awesome. I don't need to tell you that. You know already. Um, in terms of you, Camo, um, studying fine art and really breaking rules and really finding something that hasn't been done before, um, to reinforce what Katie has been telling you, uh, we're actually already kind of talking about it now. Um, the gem is something that I highlighted in, in terms of rhythm, right? So rhythm and tempo and timing. Um, you already know that it's it's all unique to you, you know. Um, we actually see it in most of your pieces and even in um your basic sketches. I can tell this is a very um it's not if 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 someone if the casual person would look at your your pencil work, right? They may think one thing, but to to the trained artist, we know like I can I can tell, I get a feeling of who you are as a person, you know. Um a lot of times with rhythm and timing, regardless of your discipline, it always informs uh, uh, it informs on your DNA and your style, you know. So that's how you can really break the mold. And like you can take, uh, let's say, the formula that Zadig, right, even though he's sour and mm -hmm. following his formula, you can take that formula and then use your rhythm and timing and you will actually mm -hmm. flip it. Like even if you're even trying to copy what he's doing, like it'll it, it, you'll you'll start breaking rules, you'll start doing things, you know. So. Yeah, yeah. I think that's the the thing that that puts a, us apart, and and the style that everyone's like trying to trying to find and trying to force it. A lot of people are trying to do that. Like you already have it. Just draw, and it will come out. Like you don't have control, even though you know the rules. When you draw, it's gonna be something unique, even though everybody has is taught the same way, in the traditional way. The thing I was trying to remember is that I got a advice when I got here into crypto. I started reading all the things, all the things that I could find about being a crypto artist. And one advice that I remember and I will always remember is that a good artist is a bit controversial. So that's what I think Zedig is in that aspect. And I told him in his stream, he laughed a bit. That was fun making him laugh. 
to sport. This is being recorded, right? I'm talking all this thing. <laughs> hey, <that>. hey, <laughs> hey, y'all. So, uh, hey, uh, Will Fam in the Stream Text channel, Will Fam on Twitch right now, and Will Fam listening to this in the future. Yes, this is being recorded right now. Yes, many people are going to be listening to Camo years from now saying, oh my God, this is Camo like being interviewed. And they're, they're going to be picking apart each and every single part of this conversation learning tips and tricks you know and really trying to know their favorite artists you know in the future so yes you're being recorded right now oh god <laughs> oh god um hey hey we have a we, have, um, we actually had a couple of questions but i'm gonna get to them later but um yeah okay Okay. I want to. I want to. Okay. Let's find. Let, 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 let's let's talk about this thing because this is one of my favorite things, right? And we briefly mentioned it before, but now I really want to unpack. Let's let's dive in deep, okay? Um, your work, right? Uh, and, and it's it's so funny that that I was like assisting you on vocals a couple of days ago when we had karaoke night here on Ahun, um, Hakuna Matata, you know, <laughs> um. Which was great. I appreciated the duet. Um, in, ter in terms of Disney movies, okay. Mm. So you were inspired when you were a child. And um, yeah. what sort of things from Disney movies were the source of your inspiration? Um, I guess um, making stuff that is not real feel real, even though it doesn't look like realism. I think that... Because I've been studying, like, actually, what is that I like about? I'm, I'm asking those questions, um, so you, so you can get like, dive in in yourself again. I'm studying this fine arts things, and that's an advice that's been given to. Uh, dive in on yourself and and ask what is it? Why is it that you really like what you like? And I think, the suspense of disbelief it, it blows my mind like when you can take like bugs bunny you 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 look at that and you think yeah that's a rabbit like to me that's just mind boggling like you compare bugs bunny with a real rabbit and, and and it's so different like same with mickey and same with other things and i love that i love cartooning people and I love how much you can change the shapes from reality and you still reads like a person you'd be like anyone be like yeah yeah that's that person I actually I was drawing you show sure. no <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you've never you've never seen me before so uh, is, cool. is, is your is your Twitter oh, picture not you oh yeah yeah okay okay so you have you have seen me before okay yeah. So I, I was drawing you, although it doesn't look exactly like you. I was having a lot of fun with the shapes and stuff. <laughs> it's the it's the energy, it's the feel. Yeah, one of one of my um, eyebrows is perpetually raised as if um, questioning what I'm looking what I'm looking at or what's going on. I see. My my I'm also asymmetrical. My one of my eyebrows is, like, is also. <laughs> um. Yeah. Wait, uh, a, wait. A couple of things. One, I always feel I, I felt like personally, I could have definitely seen your artwork as being um, something incorporated into a Pixar movie. You know, you you really have the skill there. So shout out to you. Super Thank awesome. You. Um, I, 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 I still have that, you know, that that will of working there. So I just need to work on my portfolio, but um, it will happen. If I if I still like if I still pursue that I, I know it will happen because I won't give up. I so like that. That. I like that. Speaking of not giving up, uh, when I was younger, I always loved painting with watercolors, right? But I always had problems controlling the placement of the colors themselves. So um, even as an eight-year-old, I always swore that when I got older, I was going to master and use watercolors, right, as an artist. And the crazy thing is um, I mastered other things, but I still haven't been able to master watercolors, though. Mm -hmm. So it just it's crazy because when I look at your work and like I really love your work because it looks like you use watercolors in your pieces. So I'm like, oh, I'm so jealous of Camo. She's so good. You, you think I use water? Where? 
it, it feels like it will the, the, not that you use watercolors, but the 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 use of your colors feels like you use watercolor. Okay, okay. I I do like soft things. Yeah. Watercolor is very transparent and soft. Yeah. All right. I'm, I'm also learning like the colors and stuff because I spend a lot of my time just learning drawing stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I'm dabbing on colors and getting to learn that hmm. more, perfecting it. Yes. Yeah, it's uh that we can see it. I mean, we can definitely see it. The the all right. So I I I promised everyone that I was gonna mention this particular thing. So now I will right now, right? For those of you who who are wondering which contest I was talking about previously, where I felt like Camo was should have won, uh, she she submitted a couple of emojis, right? And um. While like she 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 submitted them a little late in the process, but they eventually went in, and it was um, anonymous. It was an anonymous reveal until the last minute. Uh, and while she didn't make it, people still use the emoji now. Uh, let me see if I could find it. And you, you, everyone, it, it, like immediately, everyone is gonna realize which one I'm talking about because it's a whole set now. It's like a whole boom. Yep. Yep, there you go. Yeah, everyone's already flooding the stream tech channel. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So so Camo was the one behind the um the art pian or art pian um dolphin emoji. So there's a there's a set of like 10 of them, and then there's a couple of additions. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is uh, like, yeah, yeah. That one's in its own. Art pian its own. Oh, 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 it, okay. Yeah, there's like a <laughs> mine is the three, the set of three. The set of three, the okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, but so all they were all, all great. Me. I love them all. Yeah, so she's the she's the mastermind behind behind those right there, and everyone uses them all the time. Uh, they're super fun. Like they're, they're, it's, they're so rich in detail and color too. I have them right here. Do you want to see the process? Sure. Yeah, let's look at that. So I start with the basic shapes. Like circle, and then I like mold like a thing out of it, and then I carve the eyes. Kind of, kind of like sculpting, I feel like a bit. Uh, this one was a little hectic. It wasn't like straightforward. Just putting some colors down to see which ones I like. Color schemes. Wanted it to be bright, and then doing the fine line. You know, the line art, getting it clean ready to paint so it can be really crisp and then the shading with all the airbrushes and sparkling things and highlights and contrast lines and stuff but then later i realized it wasn't reading too well from a distance i wanted to make him read better so i uh, let me see if i can find clear the process i i chop things now Mm -hmm. Doesn't sh uh, yeah, it kind of shows here it, that I made the, 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 the fin smaller because it needs to be put on a square, so it was kind of like I learned that to do emotes, you gotta draw like, like you gotta draw from a distance. You can't zoom in, otherwise it's gonna have too many details. <laughs> uh -huh. You gotta do it from far away. You gotta not be able to zoom. Yeah, I mean, like, actually, I had to learn the hard way too. And uh, just taking your wisdom into account, I think I need to go super simple next go around. So, First, even more simple. <laughs> yeah, Ulitz just said. Um, how didn't you win in the first place? It's so good. Yeah, I agree. Like, it's so good that everyone uses this set, you know, and to the point where they even make copies, you know? So it's big, you know? The, 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 the ones that win, they do have a lot of clarity and variety. So I understand. I, I, I like them too. Yeah. They're good sets. 
<laughs> yeah, I agree. Um, all right. Um, would you like to uh, draw a little bit while I ask you a couple of questions from the from the community? Mm -hmm. Cool. You can um, have a little fun, and we'll. Um, a couple of questions came in over a period of time, but um, let's give you a shot to get get some creative juices going. No, uh, keep the flow. The first question is from Ulitz. Ulitz wanted to know. Well, well actually, okay. Ulitz wanted to know um, if you're a Pisces, yes or no. Guess again. <laughs> oh, you cut off there. I, Say that again. I said no. Do you want to guess again? I oh. I I don't <laughs> like I don't like signs. I don't like signs, Ulitz, because people <laughs> use it in a mean way to me. They're always like. Are you so and so? I knew it. You're so so and so. Like putting me on label. I don't like that. <laughs> 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 yeah, I agree. Uh, Ulysses just said that people know nothing, and I agree. You know, especially when it comes to artists, people can make assumptions. But at the end of the day, they could be a super dope artist who creates a really popular emoji in a community. So, boom! There you have that. The next question is from Decryptolorian. Decryptolorian would like to know what is your favorite Disney movie? You don't watch something every day, five times a day when you're younger, and then you say that's not your favorite movie, right? So it has to be Lion King. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's actually a pretty good one. <laughs> five times a day? Wow. My yeah, my father still reminds me. He likes to remind me of how much I used to annoy him. <laughs> yeah, I would actually. I remember pausing the, the tapes. Yeah, I'm from the VH VHS era. I paused it. I would pause it, and then I would try to copy the drawings on the screen. Oh wow, yeah. wow, that that actually explains a lot. You know. <laughs> So you were actually using it as a form of reference too. So that's uh -huh. sick. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we got to keep in mind. I mean, many of us are from the VHS era, so we know that during that period, things like rewinding and fast forwarding was a process. You didn't have a <laughs> yeah. ton of different things to watch, right? So you maybe had yeah. one or two things, and it was like an entire event. So you really had to sit with it. So yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we can. <laughs> We can thank Lion King for you being such a skilled artist. Oh. Hey, just so everybody knows, I didn't put her up to this. I didn't put her up to uh, <laughs> to her drawing me. <laughs> but this is a this is cool. This is a surprise. Uh, uh, let, let's take a look at Bam. the stream text and see. I'm a fan of show. Uh, likewise, my friend, likewise. <laughs> uh, we have a question from Addy Dust. Addy Dust would like to know, um, what do you do for fun outside of arts? We touched on uh, horse riding, but uh, what are some other things? Oh, eating, going to the beach. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Um, I love video games. Okay, what are you, are you huh. playing anything now? Yep, I am extremely addicted to Ancestors. <laughs> oh, I, yeah. Oh, and Ancestors, the uh, the Unknown Odyssey, or something like that, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a chill game and it has nature, animals, science. So I love that. Exploring, I love exploring. The the, yeah. the Zelda game was also one that I got so addicted. Breath uh, of the Wild. Yeah, yeah, wait, so Breath of the Wild 1 or 2? I think 2 came out, right? No, it hasn't come out yet. Oh, okay, well, all right, so I, I guess maybe I was looking at previews or something. But yeah, so Breath yeah. of the Wild 1. There's some trailers. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the one. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. with with Ancestors, it's it's cool because I've, uh, so personally, I made it to the Savannah, by the way, so I already have, uh, um, no, I'm like I, a further... I Forever. went all the way in the savannah and back. I'm back at the forest. Yeah. Still haven't. Because I, I let on purpose, I left some places on the... I, I was watching streams, 
non-stop and, and there aren't many streams so I was like I need to buy this game I already knew some stuff mm -hmm. like okay I gotta go if I'm going to this event I want to leave some stuff to come back to yeah you the forest yeah. is my favorite yeah you um uh a, a lot of the meteorites so like any of the green red or blue um stones that you find you could you could take them all back and leave them but then if you jump ahead in generation you may lose those uh some of the tools too so like if you uh -huh. leave it, it yeah so that so that's why if you jump ahead and then you lose your um wh wherever you call home you have to try to go travel back there but it may be difficult because you may lose some some of the skills through the dna yeah <laughs> yeah y'all hey we're, we're super gamers by the way shout out to whale gaming and gg and you got some things in the pipeline too but yeah a lot we, of artists we didn't talk gamers. speaking about gg we didn't talk about i forgot to mention how i got into the the contest and to thank my, my brazilian peers oh please go go ahead so i got so when, when katie did her live stream is when i joined because she posted on instagram so that's how i got into everything and so i was super new didn't know nothing about crypto art or i, I mean crypto in general knew nothing and then I saw that was a Brazilian text uh, channel, like Portuguese, not Brazilian, but Portuguese text channel. So I was like, hi, I need friends. And everybody was super welcoming. They immediately like embraced me and welcomed me. And so shout out to Siege for for letting me DM him. And he like uh, showed his scream and explained me all about the the wallets and stuff and also Gigi was super helpful and they helped me get the dolphin role so I was able to participate in the emote so that's amazing this community is awesome super welcoming like I was diving in a strange world and I felt like I was just visiting some friend's house you know that is such a dope story uh <laughs> Hey, shout out to all of our um, Portuguese whale fam. I appreciate each and every single one of you, um, seriously, for being so welcoming and assisting um, Camo with oh. onboarding. We, we know how difficult onboarding is in our environment. We're at the fringe of technology. There's a lot of hurdles you got to jump through. But once you get there, then you'll have uh, someone with such immense talent like Camo here to do all the things get involved you know and and uh yeah you have you have a bunch of friends here camo so it was all worth it oh so it's so fun so much fun to hang out here i love it you know it, apart from like all the fun stuff that you can like um like uh, fin financially wise like just hanging out with everybody it's fun even if it if if it wasn't, you know, it's like a bunch of friends hanging out. It's really fun. Yeah, I agree. Like I I like hanging out with all of you. Actually, truth <laughs> truth be told, uh, we have. Let me let me scroll back. We have we have a bunch of bunch of questions that just rolled in. Oh, we have a question from Alex. Alex would like to know. Um, Camo, how do you deal with the fact that some art schools impose rules? And um, well, well, okay, well, I guess we're talking back to when she was younger. Mm -hmm. And um, how did you manage to work around the fact that some art schools had a bunch of rules? Um, like I thought it was fine because I was trying to to be safe. Like with the like I said, I mentioned like parents and society kind of pressure. They want you to have the best like safer and more like career wise more like a, a, a better promise I guess of a future and a, a living wage and that in art is so uncertain so I was discouraged to join fine arts like I said I would join fine arts now but um, so I was I was eager to learn the rules actually because I wanted to do good you know i want to be hireable and yeah have a job get a job as soon as i can 
and start making money. So I wasn't really into the art aspects, you know. It was like, also, it is a thing with my generation. I I heard, not sure, that the thing with my generation is that we believe that we can work with what we love. Is that our thing? To if you that that sentence, if you work with what you love, you don't have to work a day in your life, right? Right. Uh, I later learned that <laughs> that's not true. You have to work anyway. <laughs> <laughs> a job is a job, and it's fine. I mean, uh, it's it's cool. It's good to, to work and stuff, but it is a job. There's a. So I was fine. Yeah, I was fine with the rules, but I thought I was stuck with the rules. I, did, I didn't think I was I could break it. You know, I was still thinking that fine arts is not safe, uh, and I have to make stuff that is profitable all the time. That's the only thing that I I should be making. There is no space for personal art um, outside of this crypto community and and in in the artist Twitter that I was hanging out the community there. There are some people who do uh, do art for themselves. They're just having a great time and stuff. But I know me and a lot of other artists. We are we were like suffering. Like we were stuck thinking that we couldn't do what we like. Have to do stuff to please companies or uh, employer or whatever. And that ultimately hurts us because we don't we're not so eager to do art and we're not doing it with too much heart you know too much passion it's a chore it turns into a chore i know that's true for me and for some of my friends that i try to talk to and finding the crypto art um katie also she was also a motivator like it's so freeing to realize that you can just do whatever you want. You know, you can you can work with whatever it is that you find that is, it, it gives you a return. You don't have to like do art that you don't like, so you get the, the money. You know, you can work any job and then do the art that you love. And one day maybe people will buy it if you also, of course, market it. Don't stay and silent and you're waiting for it but um but yeah like have a lot of fun with it explore do whatever your mind you know it's limitless it's limitless uh, so yeah and and crypto is a land full of opportunities that gives me a lot of hope and really motivates me to try so yeah does that so that does that answer yeah, very much so. I felt like you expressed yourself pretty eloquently there, you know. Um that's uh that particular topic and which and some of the subjects uh, attached to it. I we'll have a longer convo about that in the future. Um but yeah, everything you said, I I agree with there, you know. To an extent, there's actually some things, but we'll talk about that later. But um, You can yeah, I'm open. I don't think I I need to be right about everything. <laughs> oh no no that, no 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 I don't I don't mean that I'm not I'm not saying that I'm saying it, it that's why a, a longer conversation actually with the with the community you know we'll we'll have that in the future or something or I can have that individually with people if they want to talk about that in depth. Um, we have another question though from Rune. Rune would like to know. Uh, you provided a um. An example of an artist that you check out on YouTube on a regular. Do you have any other good references or uh, videos or books that you would recommend for someone oh who wants to learn yes. how to draw? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like I said, I come from outside of the crypto, so all I know is like how to draw stuff and art talks. And I was so much into that that I was I'm fed up with it. You know, I want some science. I want to learn some math. <laughs> No, no. <laughs> but yes, um, Contra Paint. I don't know if it, I don't know, I think it's like, 
how do you type Chrome to? I'm looking at my keyboard and I don't know. Paint.com. See if that works. That website is amazing. It's like a university a course for free. Zero, 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 zero dollars. One semester of great education. If wow. Follow, yeah. There's classes and there's work sheets. And I learned so much from that website. I'm going to grab a little screen here and then post it. All right. Do you want me to... Can I, I, can, I could open up here. Oh, no. I mean, um, no? it's cool. I mean, the, you, you're just... You're drawing. You're doing your thing. It's cool. We can, we can multi multitask. Boom. There it is right there. I just showed a screenshot. Okay. 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 All right. There. You go on a free video library and it's laid out in effort like you start here and then you go you know with steps like it's so well organized and it's free it's amazing i don't understand why people don't all know about it. <laughs> <laughs> it, it you know what's what's i mean well now they are you know it's it's mediums and platforms like this that allow people to get the inside line on certain things that are available um We've had people provide a couple of gems, you know, certain links and things like that. Uh, Dab Dragon, it's this right here. Um, Controlpaint.com. Here you go. I was posted for you all again. There you go. They're yeah. I want to know all the crypto stuff because I know all the traditional, you know, stuff. I want to mm -hmm. learn how to do the things you guys do. That's so cool. That's that's there. like specific to crypto, you know. I'm like, I don't know how to do any of that. Give me, give me an example because uh, I I know a number of things, but I'm not sure if it's in line with what you're thinking. So uh, give I me don't know. things move, they flash. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> the uh, so uh, <laughs> shout out to the Cryptolorian, um, a member of our leadership team. Um, he calls it the flashy flashy. So uh, <laughs> people who like the. So like, so how are they making all the flashies? <laughs> yeah, so one of the tools that they use is After Effects, but there are other tools that are a little more lightweight and it's easier for you to get certain things happening. You know, we can have that convo off of this too, but um, everybody has their like secrets and like their, um, or actually open secrets really, because people know, but maybe they haven't mastered them, so. Yeah, like I, 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 I think I tend to overthink, so I would like want to know why an artist, you know, like I was really into all the artist stuff. I would read everything about them, all the all their processes. I want that with crypto, you know, so mm. I can know what goes into it. Why do they choose that specifically flashy thing? Why that specific blinky effect or stuff? Mm. Yeah, so I mean, more more will fam or more will FMs with artists. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh no, hey, um, I'm not sure if anyone has noticed, but this has been the the plan, the play. You know, this is what's <laughs> really in the pipe pipeline. Even previous artists, you know, they are whale fam. You know, uh, all the artists that we have interviewed, they are members of the community, even if they're super major, huge names outside of the community. Um, if they're invited here, it's because they are considered members of our community, and many many of them are still here. Uh, still here. Some of them take part in the NFT mining program. Some just chill, hang out, and uh, do their thing. So yeah, um, a lot of the wisdom. Everyone, again, you can check out our YouTube channel, and if you listen back to and watch any of the previous videos, you'll you'll get some you get a ton of information. You know, you'll get some insight about the crypto art scene. Um, I'm also available to talk to people too if you want to know, not to inform on your artwork or even to discourage you or anything like that. That's not my style. I'm like super, I'm like overly encouraging sometimes, but I'm always down to answer a question too. All right, let's see. Um, <laughs> uh, soy soy bien just said a uh, day in the life of a crypto a cryptologist. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I would say that Camo is a is a cryptologist, you know. She's I, I'm definitely studying it. <laughs> She's paving the way. Dang. A 
Okay, Dab Dragon would like to know how has crypto changed your life overall? So we know art wise, but I guess uh, that may be a question kind of hinting at the the finance side, I guess. So like, uh, has it broadened your um, perspective on money, I guess, or currency? I wouldn't say money. Money is like, ah. But. Yeah. Um, like I said, it has given me hope, you know, and it, it has given me... I'm, I'm creating art that I want to see in the world that I wouldn't be creating otherwise. I would, speak, I would still be creating stuff that I think would get me hired. So I wouldn't be like going in and being like, what can I get out of my imagination? Like, what is that I want to experience? What is it that I want to... What is the best that I can put? And not just like that mathematic art that I was doing, you know. Because it is, it is kind of mathematic, like Zadig says. Mm. Not much, because um, I don't want to be an illustrator. People who are illustrators, they're kind of like already doing fine arts -y stuff. I was, I wanted to be a character designer. Character design always draws the characters straight up front, because that's how, that's how they, they can be best seen like always straight up front you know mm -hmm. like that and front and side and then the expressions and then some poses but not like woo, stuff like really crazy <laughs> <You know>? <laughs> <laughs> letting your imagination run that wild mm -hmm. i'm a big fan of of characters um yeah, I, I just paused for a second because I was actually thinking about um, how important uh, fully fleshing out a character is uh, on, in multiple mediums, you know, uh, front facing characters really are like the gateways to a world or uh, as in like a book or a video game, you know, or a piece of art, you know, really you, you, you pick up context clues from a character first and then you kind of gauge where they're at and what the environment is like. So the fact that Camo is so skilled at doing this says a lot about what she may be, not what she may be, but what she is capable of currently and what may come out of her work in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super character, character focused. And I, and I wonder, you know, is it, is it enough to just focus on a character in, in this fine artsy way? I mean, I see like people do all those crazy compositions and intrinsic backgrounds and stuff, and I'm like, oh, I want to, I don't, all I want, I know what to do, is putting them up front, front shot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and but it makes I'm questioning things like how can I make this the most like. Um, uh, like no value. Like, how can I make these just these lines to um, show up the best? Create that, like, add up to it. <laughs> show <laughs> showcase it the best, I guess. How can yeah. I make it pop out the most? How can I add to it without like losing the qualities that I? That I want with the lines, with just the lines, because I, I I don't feel like doing backgrounds. I haven't ever, so I don't I I don't. <laughs> I want to know how can I make lines be amazing? How can I make them the most amazing? Okay. Someone someone should get that as like a tattoo. Is like 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 an artist should really be like, hey, how can I make lines amazing? That's so that's such a deep statement right there if you really think about it because that's really what artists are doing as a whole they're all just making lines amazing but amazing according to them from their perspective or they're overlaying it with their personal rhythm and timing just to go back to what we were talking about before mm -hmm. we have another question from snotty snake snotty snake would like to know have you thought about working in the games industry i mean perfect perfect question do um, if the game is a game that adopts this sort of style and I'm 
I'm seeing it being more and more um, the the animation style because animation um, because it's not interactive. The animation it, they record it on a shot and that's it. They can make it really intrinsic with the details and all the the rig of the characters, the 3D characters. It moves in like billion ways. They they do that with realistic games as well, but I haven't seen that with stylized game, I guess, as much. But I have been seeing this come out more. So if they, if it's a match, if me in the game are a match, then absolutely. I mean, there is no, I don't think it's, a, in that case, it, it's a style obstacle. I think it, it, it's the same if you're making a character for animation or a video game. No, it's not the same because you gotta take in consideration the mechanics and all that. It's not just what's the prettiest, I guess. But I am making a character for my boyfriend's game that he is making. So I'm already working on it. Yeah, that's <laughs> dope. That's dope. Can you can you show us a little bit or yeah. is it top secret? Or? It, it is top secret, but I can show it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's a game like like um, like Mario. They run around and collect things like Mario Odyssey, and it's called Mariachi. His his studio is called Star Star Dunes. You can find it on Twitter. He hasn't released anything yet, but you can you can follow him. So it's a it's a little uh, uh, alebrije, mm. a little armadillo alebrije mm -hmm. that rolls around and jumps and collects stuff in a Mexican-inspired universe. Here I have a tons of concepts that I made here in this sheet. So exploring shapes and different possibilities. I love this. I love making a million billion possibilities. It can be boring for some people, but I like it a lot. I love, no. uh, I love the possibility of uh, endless the shapes and the lines. Yeah, there's a there's a common thread with artists where um, when it comes to creating things, uh, especially like this. So you're showing us various different layers and, and styles, right? Um, many of the artists tend to dive deeply into creating these layers, you know, and they don't show it to the public. You only you only get the final product but the artist really loves doing things like this right kind of feels like that yeah people that work with games or animation the they can never show their portfolio to the public almost like it not almost 90 percent of it doesn't get released so they they don't get to show it to the public right right this is cool, y'all. You see these? Yeah, I'd spend I'd spend money if I if I knew that camo. Um, if I if I knew that camo was the was the 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 chief illustrator, then I'd I'd spend I'd spend some whale. I'd spend some ETH. <laughs> it's cool. But it's a process, you know. Like I made a character that this was one of the first ones that I think. The one on the far left is the one that I thought was the best looking one, and you can see, you can notice that it's very Disney-esque, very animation-esque. But then the team, they have their vision, and the, my and the job of the concept artist is to create their vision. So you gotta make stuff that you not personally love it. You're trying to make it look the best. But it might not be your, you know, in the end, the final design might not be the one that you love the most. I made different versions. The ones that went, they like the most that they're, they're going for right now is this one. This is the 3D model and then I edited it to make it to fit rules of design and You know the three quarter. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm like staring. I'm staring at all the things right now, and I'm like, wow. 
I painted it, um, I painted it away, they didn't like it. Uh, painted it this way. Didn't love it. So. Taper it, hold on. All done. I really have to get Procreate tool so awesome. Well, something wrong is not right, so. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, we get the, we get the gist. Okay. It looks, I mean, it looks good. We can't tell. You, you didn't have to say anything. We would have definitely gotten it. The, um, and again, this also it's so it's so interesting that this 3D model looked like for a little while it had like watercolor, like I was talking about recently, you know, it had a like you, you were going through the different lightings and shades and this this orange and like um, I would say this is a very it's like it's like a darker purple chrome ish color and it looks cool. It looks it, it definitely sticks out. It looks like it was done with like some some really hyper watercolor matte finish i'm going through i'm going through the entire crayola box <laughs> but i do love a lot of watercolor so it might be something that i do unconsciously this looks good wow the detail i messed up something okay here we go Okay, this was the color, I guess. Mm. Mm, I like it. it was just a concept, you know? No, I like it. I like it. I like, <laughs> I like it. There's an artist um, that I, I, I follow on Twitch, which uh, and he's really cool and I, I won a raffle and I asked him to paint mariachi and he did a super super rendered um drawing of it don't maybe it's too heavy I'll post it on chat I think that would be faster okay cool I know while that really happens. Stumpy. He and he drew that. He did that with his hands. He didn't use a 3D model or anything. Crazy, right? Still waiting for it to load up. But oh oh wow, y'all. Do you see this picture? Wow. So it's cool. As, as a concept artist, like I'm only gonna do things at this level of render that I that I that I show. I'm not gonna well render it. But when I do see something well rendered, it's like my child has been birthed by someone mm -hmm. else, but still my child. Mm -hmm. It is. This is the, yeah. This is. Oh, I could totally t see this as like a PlayStation game or something. This is like. Uh, this is perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, does anyone have any final questions for Camo? Giving it a second. Yes, Gravenator. Yeah, that that. Uh, Mariachi looks like uh, Jack and Daxter. Like it, it could look, it looks like it belongs in the same world, or as like a Spyro too. Oh, uh, Rune the uh, her Instagram. I will post that right here. Just give me a second. That's her Instagram. 
Okay, Camo, um, do you have any final words for the whale community? Yes, I am just starting out this journey and this is amazing. I'm really humbled by this opportunity. Thank you so much, Sho. And if I can contribute in any way to anyone, if you want to DM me and we can talk about anything, uh, change um, figurines, that's a, a saying in Brazil, like you're going to exchange ideas, change collectibles, figurines. I don't know. <laughs> That's cool. Feel I like free. that. Yeah, feel free to DM. <laughs> I know yeah, more. I know more websites for learning art and stuff. I, I I can send more stuff. Books. I forgot to mention. Someone asked for books. I forgot to mention. I would type them in the DM. Thank you, guys. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Uh, so if you'd like to exchange figurines, I like that. I like that term with camo. Uh, she's available. Obviously, she's just like you. She's part of the community, y'all. Um, camo, on behalf of the whale community, uh, thank you so much for uh, your artwork and the energy that you've um, contributed to the community since your arrival here. Um, you greatly appreciate it. And um, we'd love to see more from you and just hang out overall definitely will you guys are so fun to hang out and i'm if i'm here and you guys like me it's a reflection you know because like people attract like people right isn't that a saying yeah it definitely like is <laughs> yes <laughs> and i want to see a show live art stream and an <laughs> interview please <laughs> This is this is about this is about uh, the fam, you know. It's about you. It's about you all. You know, we're all just doing all the things. Yeah. I see. We gotta vote. We gotta put up a vote and have you do it. <laughs> oh no, there's a. <laughs> but but for everyone, uh, just so you do know, we have a bunch of things in the pipeline. A lot of things we're building. We're building out. Um, um, just like Camo, a ton of artists coming through doing their thing talking all the vibes yeah um everyone thank you so much for coming through uh, this has been fun i uh like i'm so bullish i'm so bullish on camo oh <laughs> she posted uh uh her illustration of me which looks awesome uh i appreciate that so much i like that um that i was turned into a a, a character 